Welcome to Future Foodcast. I'm Pam Linemiller, your host. And have you ever thought about what's going on in all parts of the world and, and in the background of the food industry as well? There is a lot of technology and support happening there. I'm so excited today to have one of the leaders, one of the blockchain leaders in India with us. His name is Kamlesh Nagwari, and he is the co-founder of FSV Capital. Welcome to our show, Kamlesh. Yeah, thank you, Pam and Fujet Food Cost for inviting. It's great to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. And you have a rich history in the blockchain space, in technology in general. And um, you're actually one of the co-chairs of Hyperledger India. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, could we start out by maybe sharing a little bit with our audience who might not be as familiar with technology? I love technology about what Hyperledger is and, and your experience and, and blockchain, just give us a little bit of an idea of where you work. Yeah, so just let me brief and uh, give the context, what is a Hyperledger and how it is started. So when this Bitcoin and cryptocurrency started in, in 2009, Bitcoin is the first and then a couple, couple of ultra coins, Ethereum. And that was more focused on the public public blockchain kind of fundamentals. So Linux Foundation, which is one of the largest open source community, Given a thought like, why not we use this uh, uh, revolutionary technology to build something for the enterprises and businesses? And they given an idea of Hyperledger. So technically, Hyperledger is uh, enterprise blockchain frameworks or the set of projects which which used by ind industries, enterprises, government to create the DLT and blockchain for uh, enterprise use cases. So technically, it's a blockchain but most focus around the business and enterprises. Yeah. And, nice. and in the ledger, India is one of the regional chapters, uh, chapters where we bring community and advocate about the technology in the larger level. Yeah. And, you know, some of the advantages, I mean, Hyperledger really focusing on that business piece of it and applications in the business world is so important because there really are some great use cases for the technology in business. And I know you've been involved in a lot of um, different ones with that. And in the food industry in particular, now that we are trying to uh, kind of lock down, you know, tracing and tracking our food and having that blockchain, which is that immutable chain of custody uh, is, is really critical. And I know you've worked on a lot of projects in the food industry along those lines. Yeah, right. so I think when I started, uh, the maybe you ever heard about the Food Trust, uh, which is a well-known project from IBM and Walmart. And that gave an idea like how traceability is important uh, for any, 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 any food. And they give an example how you can trace the mango in just seconds instead of days. Uh, so this is the initial example. And then number of different startups came into the picture who are building the traceability around uh, around products. And not just food, but it could be around, let's say, uh, kind of any kind of luxury goods, uh, any kind of cloth, even, even, even the... Uh, bringing the sustainability, climate change, kind of a fundamentals in the so technically blockchain is very good for supply chain because in supply chain we have multiple stakeholder and when we want to see the transparency within stakeholders, how the function and how the businesses are conducting and customer need to know about the authenticity of the product so then they can they blockchain can play a very important role because it's immutable. Uh, it's temper proof or, or it provides the decentralized trust. That is the main goal of, of the any blockchain system. And supply chain or any other like trade finance or the larger ecosystem of businesses where the current business are in, in silos and they work independently in their own systems. So connectivity and trusting the data each other is always a concern. And blockchain could solve that problem. And that's why the now first use cases in a blockchain was the supply chains. Uh, where let's say IBM Food Trust and Walmart and the and yeah. the number of use cases in India, I have part of it. Yeah, there. Uh, not to look over the very first thing you said about the advantage of using technology before to trace the mango. It was days 
to do that. And that was because it was very manual process, right? You had to track back through all of the paperwork, but okay. now you speed it up to be seconds or minutes where you can know exactly what the track of that particular mango was. And yeah. um, that's revolutionary uh, in, in the food business. They can save a lot of money, a lot of efficiencies uh, there. And you also mentioned banking. There's lots of applications, again, in the finance industry. Um, and that's that's a lot of what you're working in today, too, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, talk to us about, because uh, there are a lot of regulations happening in across the globe, but particularly in Europe, I think is normally <laughs> the initial one, maybe the United States coming after uh, as far as regulation, particularly um, in the food space. And what can you share about that? So I think food is very critical and essential, essential part of the any human journey, right? And when we're talking about food, it must be authentic. It must be there is no any duplication or this is, and the customer or the consumer have rights to know about the its uh, journey, and and that's why there are standard rules and regulation already there. And let's say uh, US FDA has a very stronger rules around the traceability of the of the product. In the similar way, uh, Europe has added some kind of uh, uh, foods, especially which are imported from the other countries. So they they want to know the chain of the records, how this is uh, this food is uh, a crop and then distributed and sell to the exported to the other country. Mm -hmm. So even I think next next year onwards, it is mandatory every food supplier who are exporting to these countries must have a proof of uh, traceability how this product is and their blockchain can play a very important role. So I think. When this rules become a mandate uh, to the suppliers and producer, then they need to use these technologies. And I think there are the number of already initiatives being taken care by a number of startups globally where I part of it. For example, is a JSFN India. We are doing the traceability in the food traceability, uh, in a, in a milk food trace milk traceability and the traceability of meat, which is exported and largely to the Europe, European countries and they want to show the they want to see the traceability of this product because because there are uh, because due to this uh, corona virus and other thing they want to see the traceability like products would not be any uh, infected or it, it should be healthy to eat and That's and nice. other thing in the food industry which is a very problem in every country where is the alliteration in the in, in, in the product so people are mixing some other material or other food item which is not allowed how you will you know all this thing because and that is very critical is you are playing the health playing with the health of a person so using technology using blockchain you can you can address this part when you have the traceability you have the trust on the data what you're seeing on labeled on the product yeah, and that is becoming more and more important. And like you said, regulation is following that. And so companies are being required uh, to do that, to take in, you know, what ingredients, uh, what original source did they have? And did they manipulate it at all or change it or manufacture it or produce a different product? And then they have to share that with the um, remaining people in the supply chain. And all of that regulation is very important for us as consumers to know that we're getting safe products. If they uh, have certain attributes of the products, we know those we trust. Like you said, you use that word, we trust that those are accurate because it's been um, tracked all along and we, we know where things have been. And what are the big things with technology, I think, um, because so you mentioned earlier, um, you know, the industry working kind of in silos, very independent, you know, you might have, um, uh, it happens in other industries as well, but particularly in food, you know, maybe the growers and then the dis suppliers and then the, the manufacturers and then the distributors. And um, so there's a some consistency that's needed so that everybody can communicate with everybody else and some standardization. And I know across the world, um, GS1 has been very helpful in that. We have them here in the U.S. I know you have them in India, all across in uh, standardizing some of those um, barcodes and QR codes and things like that. Yeah. So I think uh, this 
one thing is data and another is the standardization because let's say if you building any product in india and you defining your own set of records and when you exporting let's say us and europe and they have that different set of uh, identification of the product so how you will interoperate like how you will understand the product along with data because generally in supply chain when is actual product is shipped second the data is shipped that data is transferred actually so right. how you will be aligned maybe the product is raised but if your data is not able to interchange or not able to give the meaning that's why the standardization is very important role and that's why uh, global organization like gs1 which define the standard for any product or any supply chain mm -hmm. like what data which format and giving a global identification to the product this plays important role and now in gs1 in gs1 and other gs1 in gs1 entities they also leverage in the blockchain technology around it because they closely work with government regulators in the respective countries where they want to define the standards and define the need of traceability so currently we are doing two three projects in india where we are uh, doing the traceability of meat traceability of uh, milk product traceability of pasmina salts and using the technology and using the standards and making this standards interoperable so even this product if ship to ship to europe it could be identifiable it could be tracked or it could be tracked via some common platform and that's why technology plus standardization is very important while you building any global product yeah and we are global that's the that's the reality of it we have to figure out how to have that interconnectivity because we are global we all have to be able to talk to each other more and more i think as we move forward it's not just you know state specific country specific um everyone is is interfacing with others and we've got to figure out how to talk to each other so that's why having people like you experts in the field is so important to be able to help us to make those translations and figure out um, how to do that but there's there's other applications too i mean there's uh, applications in uh, finance and banking that technology can be really helpful i don't know if you have any examples that you'd like to share but um just to help our audience visualize you know what we're what we're talking about okay so i think after supply chain i see the financial services especially banking is very good use cases around the clearing and settlement remittances cross border payments because there are lots of hurdles and bottlenecks especially think about the any cross border payment transaction generally remittance business is lots of uh, frictions while sending money from in australia to india or us to australia and there are number of participant and number of banks are involved there and that at cost so in simply as imagine any of the businesses where you have multiple stakeholder or middlemen there is always the friction and cost is added yeah. and using blockchain you could bring all this ecosystem together and can share the common ledger and that will help you to do the real time settlement because settlement is very important in any of the business in especially in bfsi and and currently you must be heard about some uh, uh, some buzzword around the tokenization or maybe heard about the cbdc so cbdc is a central bank digital currency so even in india already right. live uh, pilot from couple of years where we tokenize the money and instead of printing money we are distributing tokens in form of money and the similar is happening in other countries more than 134 countries already exploring around the cbdc and the tokens and bis which is a another kind of global standard body like gs1 that is bank of international settlement they are also advising and building common common platform and standard where all the central banks can talk to talk to each other using the dlt and blockchain and it will strengthen the current existing digital economy using dlt tokenization and use the cbdc layer where you can do the instant settlement of the even cross border payment and and not just the only uh, retail money but for the wholesale money uh, kind of green bond uh, any of the securities all could be on uh, either digitized digital token on blockchain itself this yeah. is one of you already happening around the globe 
You know, a lot of people are very skeptical about the central bank digital currency idea, uh, but the reality is it's really a lot more secure than, you know, all these paper checks <laughs> flying around and your account numbers being out everywhere. And uh, as we think about the way we have done business um, leading up till now, and like you said, the speed of being able to settle, because it's very important for people to be able to get their money and get paid. So when a transaction happens, instead of it having to go through the middlemen that you mentioned, and uh, especially across countries, when you're trying to have that interoperability there, they can deal directly and things get settled. People get paid. The farmers get paid a lot quicker when you're actually I'm talking about farmers, but I mean, it could be in any any commerce, really, any business application. So thanks for bringing that concept out to us, because I think uh, that's good for a lot of our listeners to understand some of the benefits of taking advantage of technology. Um, and, and particularly back to the food space and supply chain, you know, there's other things that we can track, not just the product itself, but you know, with the internet of things and different sensors and indicators, right? Um, some of those are very advantageous for us to be able to find out characteristics about transportation. I don't know if you'd like to give some example there. Yeah, so I think uh, in supply chain, when we uh, track the records, so in data input is very important, how you get the input. So one way maybe is a manual entry by any, any, any point, yeah. by any of the stakeholder. But there is a chances of manual errors. So generally, there are IoT sensors, could NFCs could play a very important role where you directly uh, collect the data from the source itself without any human intervention and then recording on ledger. And so there are a number of solutions already where you're using IoT devices, sensors to capture the data and then 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 recording on, on blockchain. Yeah. And the similar way. So, so so it will it will do many other things as well like it will it will streamline the your uh, supply chain processes it, it will streamline the your uh, operation cost because now you don't no need any, any kind of human intervention so all this thing is very important and along with this one there are many other use cases happening around the food trust and food supply chain where capturing the esg related data or uh, come a kind of climate uh, carbon credit kind of data because uh, in, in in the in the consumer also want to be sure like the product they are buying is is a, is, a, is a not impacting the environment is a, is a carbon zero and so our at least less carbon compared to other product so nowadays even supply chain all the companies even i seen many startups in india who let's say a startup called tracex they are really focusing the traceability supply chain is, is one of the use case. But now they are evolve around the how to capture the ESG data and how the you calculating the carbon footprint impact of the food supply chain. Right. And, and that will help in many terms. One is consumer can decide which product they want to buy. Secondly, it will help organization to be carbon neutral and give the give, give the ESG data. To the bigger organization with the larger scale. Let's say, for example, if Walmart able to capture all this information about their carbon footprint, then it will is add value to their authenticity and uh, their contribution to the uh, environment as well. Right, and we know what's actually happening out there because it the information is being collected by devices, not put on a clipboard by somebody, and then somebody else's data entering. You have a couple of areas where you could have human error, which absolutely happens, especially with the volumes that we're talking about. But not only that, you know, inventory, food food waste is a big problem that can be helped by being able to know your inventories and know when your products are going to be arriving more accurately, because if they're tracked electronically, right, you can be able to access that information and be able to forecast a little better. Right. So, so even I think in supply chain, especially I think people, especially the non- non non blockchain industry not able to understand like what is the value of blo your blockchain in a supply chain they maybe see as a direct roi perspective whether they are maybe getting more revenue or something else but if you see the value of blockchain is facing supply chain maybe all the point you discuss about the having a stop of waste food food wastage 
because suppose if you now know what is your uh, uh, supply chain they you can advance in plan or uh, whether is the food extra or uh, or whether you know you see the inventory in, in in a better efficient manner so all this be better at all and secondly also you could monetize and you could uh, settle the transaction of the your suppliers so i i came across one use case in the walmart uh, where they implemented uh, when the supply chain and on on blockchain they able to uh, give able to discount to the, their suppliers uh, in around 1 or 2% on basis of because earlier when they want to see the settlement of the any any supplier transaction they could take around days let's say seven days and now if they now see can see the transaction settled in just uh, in a, in a seconds so they can ask their supplier to raise an invoice advice invoice in uh, invoice in um, advance and for that they can maybe get need to pay less money because earlier maybe the supplier getting taking maybe 10 days 15 days to settle their uh, supplier now it is settled in just next day right and that is value added to the supplier because they're getting their uh, 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 cost or the the output is is, is just, just the next day and walmart or the companies who are need to settle this transaction maybe they need to earlier paying up to 15 days so all this kind of scenario is, a, is, a, is, a, is a intangible not accountable but when someone implements it they can realize how it is adding value yeah and because money, you know, there's the cost of money. And so the longer you take to settle, I mean, somebody's having to, there's a, there's a gap in there. I mean, there's interest required or or you're you're having to get lines of credit to pay ahead and et cetera. And so this just makes things happen much more efficiently uh, in all the transactions that are happening financially. Well, what else would you like to share with us about the work that you do, Kamlesh? So I... I part of many such projects already from last couple of years. So I, I can say some example how how it being uh, being added value, and secondly, uh, some interesting use cases which maybe never give a thought, and uh, third, how the government and how the regulators regulators see about this adoption of the technology. So okay. first, let's start with uh, the use cases. So I worked on a couple of use cases one is food traceability of one company in in, in ue so this company actually supplies food to the one uh, big hotel chain yeah and now this hotel chain want to see the traceability authenticity of organic foods whether what are the supply is organic or not organic so they came to us and we implemented their blockchain based platform where we recorded all the information from uh, and this company already is a one heavy tech company whether this is only food supplier company, but they have very heavy tech. They call every transaction on their IT system and then is visible to the uh, hotel. But hotel, how to trust the hotel? So they come, come to implement blockchain. So now we added this blockchain layer. Now every transaction from the this food supplier company. Now who are suppliers to this company have recorded information and all the ledgers and all the transaction and is directly visible to the hotel. Now, hotel chain just only want to see the product detail. He just enter and he can see end to end from the supplier to their supplier detail. Right and there. That, like this. So this, and this is added the value in terms of the trust and bringing more business to the company because instead of, because not just is a, is a use case, but it's a compliance nowadays by the different hotels and like they want to work with the company who have a clear visibility of their transparency and supply chains. Yeah. This is one use case. Second interesting use case where I'm involved, where we're using this technology, the traceability in the West. Second use case where we implemented technology in a waste management industry. So waste management where we're never given a thought like how technology could be used in the that minimal level of uh, the societies where they collect the waste and process and recycle all those things. So we implemented use case of supply chain where all this uh, recycled materials being uh, how it is being collected and then recycled and then reprocessed and plastic credit. So we're doing with the plastic industry actually. So plastic being uh, plastic credit is created. 
and thankfully this kind of initiative already supported by governments and there are couple of uh, good fund supported so in india we are part of one regulatory sandbox where we are using this waste management supply chain and creating the carbon credit called plastic credit which is tradable across the world yeah. so this kind of use cases how you can apply blockchain the similar could be even applicable to the food industry where you feel because there are lots of food wastage in there as right so how you can process and reprocess and get some kind of credit of the your food wastage yeah the recycling it this thing and third uh, where, where i see like uh, because part of the many different organization in in india and globally i see the it, it just not the only uh, use case of any business now governments and regulator want to see the data which is transparent and data is trusted and transparency and trust can be given by blockchain te- technology in, in in build because it uses the cryptography it uses the decentralization it uses the consensus mechanism agreement mechanism so so now there are regulation is being built up like i mentioned about the europe one is not mentioning about the technology is mentioning about the what they need and how now now the technology is how you want to achieve it that that's your thought but what they need they need the trusted data source input from end to end which and then only the some license or some kind of export license or some kind of license given to them so currently i am part of three projects i mentioned so where where we are working with ministries in india central ministry where we are using technology to create the supply chain of the different use cases and not just only use cases plan to create some kind of consortium around it so not just only one company and other companies get benefited it could be uh, is a mandatory to everyone to be uh, use the system this kind of use case like, yeah. like how the i know about the walmart like they mandated uh, all their supplier to use that blockchain platform if they if they want to do business with them so whether the government and the regulator support it whether any big player like walmart or a big company come and as their supplier to use the technology then we can address the moon uh, as a larger level yeah and you know just the the use cases are very powerful to understand some of the benefits of of implementing advanced technology and especially in the food industry for where it is right now so thank you so much for sharing those and from sharing from your experience in all these different areas we're we're so glad you came on the show with us kamlash Yeah, thank you, thank you, Pam, and thank you, Future Food Cost, for inviting me. Absolutely, and to our audience, thank you for listening. If you want to hear more technology-focused shows, please let us know and comment on this one. We would love your feedback. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Until then, I'm Pam Line Miller. Thanks for listening to Future Food Cast. Future Food Cast is powered by Farm to Plate, the leading food blockchain platform. Subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to stay up to date with the very latest innovations in the food industry.